all of this talk about uh, trying to get fragmented the construction industry and from the construction up, at the end of the day, we have to get that information into the credit markets. And we have two people that have joined our panel today from the credit markets. And our objective with the orange button is to whether or not you're an insurance or a bank, they're both credit instruments. If we can have it to where they're both looking for the same information and aligning the insurance industry and the capital markets, financial markets together. So uh, one of the main leaders in this is uh, my friend, John Prevatali. And so John, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the monthly operating report and your work with the Orange Button and, and Wells Fargo's leadership role in helping the Orange Button become the public benefit and how the taxonomy might, is helping you. All right, thank you, Dixon. Yeah, we are a, we at Wells Fargo are a huge advocate of standardization using the orange button. And we are encouraging our customers to send us data in the orange button format, uh, both to monitor the performance of our portfolio of solar and frankly wind assets as well, because we believe the orange button format can apply to wind. Uh, and also, uh, send us data for what we call the origination process, where we review uh, proposed projects for funding and perform due diligence on those projects, both commercial and technical due diligence. Uh, we, to be candid, have had a hard time scaling our business. We provide approximately 10% of the financing to the wind and solar industry in the United States. So it's a very large portion. Um, we finance several gigawatts of wind and solar a year. And um, we would like to do more. Uh, and we would also like to better serve the distributed generation or the, the rooftop solar and uh, parking canopy solar space for commercial and industrial customers. One of the things that's happened over the last few years is that we've really gravitated towards large utility scale projects and we're very happy with that. Um, but one of the reasons is, is that there's so much data associated with uh, essentially processing the financing and also monitoring the performance of these projects that it's much easier for us to uh, perform that work using large projects instead of lots of smaller projects. We just can't hire enough people to essentially meet the demand for uh, solar and uh, all the projects work with all the projects that our customers are bringing to us. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm highly encouraging our customers to use the orange button format. And also we have uh, contributed software to the open source orange button effort. Um, most recently, uh, one of our, I would say one of the most, one of the brightest minds at Wells Fargo in software technology uh, contributed the OBTV uh, interface, which is a free interface for people to uh, see and search the orange button taxonomy. So and that is completely public, it is a donation that we um, made to the world uh, uh, in order to basically help our customers, um, help us scale and also to achieve a um, very important goal, which I uh, need to mention, and that is a $200 billion commitment to reducing carbon emissions over the course of um, this decade. So Wells Fargo, uh, is trying to deploy $200 billion to uh, help reduce global warming by 2030. Uh, and frankly, if the world needs more than that, uh, we will bring it to the table. We, we are that serious about this issue. Thank you, Dixon. Thank you, John. And say that, you know, one of the problems that we have is because of so much manual transcription of data, like that problem that Mike was talking about, getting data from PDFs and putting it into, you know, spreadsheets or our database. We have errors. And, you know, when you're talking about projects that are hundreds of millions of dollars, 
those errors can be quite large. So um, the benefit of having consistent and error-free data using Orange Button is also incredibly valuable to us. Charlie, I'm